Okay, so in class we really were talking about what is expected value and what does it represent on the graph. So now let's actually look at some examples of how we can use expected value. And so again, just like most things we do in here, we just have to kind of sort through the data. And so it says a private equity group intends to purchase one of two motels currently being offered for sale in a certain city. The terms of sale of the two motels are similar, although the Regina Inn has 52 rooms and is in a slightly better location than the Merlin Motor Lodge which has 60 rooms. Records obtained for each motel reveal that the occupancy rates with corresponding probabilities during the May through September tourist seasons are shown in the following table. So notice the occupancy rate is like how full they are, like 80% full, 19% chance that that's gonna happen. In fact, if they're 100% full, that only happens 5% of the time. So that's kind of what that represents um, in this problem. Have a good weekend. Um, uh, and so then for the Merlin Motor Lodge, we have these as our, um, our occupancy rate, like how full it is, and these as our probabilities. And so it says the average profit per day for each occupied room is $40. The average profit per day for the, the Mo Merlin Motor Lodge is $36. Part A says find the average number of rooms occupied per day at each motel. Um, I'm going to double page this because I kind of gave you uh, room here. Have a good weekend. Um, and so it says, let X denote the occupancy rate at the Regina Inn. This is kind of small. Um, then the average daily occupancy rate at the Regina Inn is given by this X value. So think this is like our, our uh, random variable, and then this would be our probability of X equaling X. So if I want to find the expected value, I'm just going to take 0.8 times 0.9 plus 0.85 times 0.22, right? And so I'm going to go back to a single page for you to show you so you can see it better. So the expected value on here, I'm just taking those occupancy rate times this, occupancy rate times this, right? That's what we do for expected value, and we get 0.8865 as the average uh, occupancy rate over that period. And remember that they tell us how many rooms are in there. The average number of rooms occupied. There are 52 rooms. So I'm going to take this rate times the number of rooms in there. So I'm going to take uh, my expected value times the number of rooms and I get that the average number of rooms occupied in the Regina Inn during that time is 46.1 rooms. Oh, look, it says that already. Um, we could do the same thing for the Merlin Motor Lodge, right? If this represents our random variable, this would be our probability. So to find the expected value, I just take this times this plus this times this, right? And I get... Um, 0.8240, but remember that the Merlin Motor Lodge had more rooms. They had 60 rooms, um, so I don't know where that number is. So I take that times 60 rooms, and I get that they have approximately 49.4 uh, rooms occupied on average during that time. So this is where people in the business world really can use expected value because remember, they gave us the profit. So this was part A. Part B says, if the investor's objective is to purchase the motel that generates the higher daily profit, which motel should they purchase? And it says, compare their expected daily profit. So they told us that the Regina Inn is $40 per room and the Merlin Lodge is $36 per room. I don't know if I left you another. I think I left you another thing here. So if I wanted to do the... Um, the average profit there on that, right? Then for the, oh wait, let's do the Regina Inn first, right? Was that one first? Boys, the Regina Inn, you're being really loud. 46.1 was our um, average um, number of rooms occupied and um, they made a profit of $40 per day. So when you multiply that together, you get the expected daily profit 
is $1,844 per day. And that the, um, the Merlin Motor Lodge The average number of rooms were 49.4, but their average daily profit was only $36. And again, that all came from the, the uh, room and got $1,778. Uh, so if you were trying to compare who makes the most money, then you're going to go with the Regina Inn because they're making, um, on average, more daily profit. So that's how you can use expected value um, to go from there, okay? So here's another example. Um, it says, how many more examples do we have here? Yeah. It says, um, the Island Club is holding a fundraising raffle. 10,000 tickets have been sold for $2 each. There'll be a first prize of $3,000, three second prizes for $1,000 each, five third prizes for $500 each, and 20 consolation prizes of $100 each. Let X denote the, the net winnings um, that you will win um, less the cost, like it says, winnings less the cost of the tickets. So that's like your profit. Associated with the ticket, find your expected value, interpret your results. So think about where they got this, uh, this number. So how many people, like they're selling 10,000 tickets uh, for $2 each. And only one person, three, so one plus three plus five plus 20. So 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 people are winning out of 10. And the rest of the people are not winning, right? So that's where this came from. So where did this come from? Because this is how many people aren't winning. So this is like 9971 out of 10,000. So that's where these numbers are coming from. And um, it says, let X denote your net winning. So, so 9,971 people are losing $2. That's their net winnings. And then 20 people win $100. So that's where the, the variable is 98 because you lost your $2, that, but you won 100. So your net winnings are $98. And then the grand prize was three thousand dollars so even the person one out of ten thousand people won that prize their net winnings are two thousand nine hundred ninety eight so if i do the expected value i'm going to take each of those times the uh f times the probability so like you i just want to make sure you understand where that that uh these numbers are coming from and then it's just typing it in your calculator And then the winner here, 2998. So what do you think? Even with the only one person winning $3,000, do you think we're going to get a positive number or a negative number here? Well, when you type this all in your calculator, you get um, negative 0.95 is your expected value. So what does that mean in terms of the problem? Well, uh, it means that the average people are going to win, right? Like it says, the expected value gives a long-run average loss of a holder of one ticket. That is, if one participated in such a raffle by purchasing one ticket each time, in the long run, they would be expected to lose 95 cents each time. Um, and so this is our expected value, which means the person, the people, they sell these tickets, they're going to come out ahead, the people selling it, but the person playing it is losing money um, on this. So uh, what about roulette? It says roulette in the game of roulette as played in Las Vegas casinos the wheel is divided into 38 compartments numbered 1 through 36 and then there's zero and double zero. Half of the numbers are red the other half are black and zero and double zero are green. Of the many types of bets that may be placed one type involves betting on the outcome of the color uh, for example, you may place a certain sum of money on red. If the winning number is red, one wins that amount equal to the bet placed, and the, and the amount of the bet is returned. Otherwise, you lose the amount of the bet. Find the expected value of winnings on a dollar bet uh, 
for for winning. So here's what you want to think about. How many of these are red? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, right? So it's divided into 38 uh, compartments. Um, 18 of them are red. So if you bet a dollar, you get a dollar back. So that expected value would be that my bet would be a dollar. I'd win a dollar 18 out of 36, 39, 38 times, sorry. And how many times would I lose a dollar? Well, I would lose a dollar the rest of the times. And so there's 18 black, but there's also two green. So 20 out of 38 are, um, are losing. So if you do that, you get negative 2 out of 38, or if you take that to money, that's like negative 0 0.053 expected value. Which means that if you place a $1 bet on red over and over again, the expected value is you're going to lose on average. Um, not much, 5 cents on average is what you're going to lose. Okay? And so when you get an expected value... It says, example five and six illustrate games that are not fair, quote unquote. It says, most participants in such games are aware of this fact, um, and they participate for other reasons, to have fun or whatever, or there's a chance of winning. Um, but if you want to talk about a fair game, it says, in a fair game, neither party has an advantage, a condition that translates into this condition, that if you want a fair game, your expected value should be zero, because if it's negative or positive, it means someone's more likely to win. It's not um, averaged out. Okay, let me see where my time is. 12.14. So this last question, I want you to think about how you could set it up in order to make this a fair game. And so I'm going to see if you can come up with this, and this is where we'll start in class on Tuesday.